Are you trying to make sure that whatever research you do has the biggest impact possible and gets you into medical school? Then you need to watch this video. But stop making excuses, stop whining, stop, right? Get at it. No excuses, just dominate. What is up guys? Dr. Andre Pinesit, The Study Doc, and today we're talking about research. And this, <laughs> This topic comes up because I got an email from a student, and like I said, I always encourage you guys, take a second, there's a link in the box below, leave me voicemails, send me emails. I like the voicemails better, I can hear your voice, and I can respond back to you guys, but send me your questions because I'm here to help you guys get where you wanna go. And so I got an email from a student who was asking me about research experiences, and not any old research experiences, but this student asked me and said, hey Dr. Pineset, I had the opportunity to do this summer research program at Harvard, and it's a big name program, right? Harvard, it'd be great to have that on my transcript. How much will that play in to me getting to medical school? That's the first thing. And the second thing is, is should I do it if in order to do it, I would have to take more classes this term? And the, I'm trying to synthesize, it was a long kind of like weaving emails many of you guys send me, but the question really becomes, is does where you do your research matter and what are the considerations you should make when deciding if that research experience is the right one for you? And the first thing I'll say guys about this whole topic, and this kind of lays it out, is that Research is not mandatory to get into medical school. Anyone who tells you otherwise doesn't know what they're talking about. Research is not necessary and mandatory to get into medical school. With that being said, it is a nice cherry on the Sunday of the application you build. Meaning, if you've done everything else right on your application, developed a really nice application, and then you follow that up by also having a really nice research experience, then it serves as that cherry on the Sunday that's just it just tells you that, that Sunday was freshly made and it's full of goodness, like, ooh, that red cherry. That's what it does. So that's the first thing. So when you get really hung up on research, don't get too hung up on it because it's not the base of your foundation. What's more important is building the other parts of the base. And as I talk about that, it's kind of my second point, which is... I'm writing so slow so that way I can at least partly meet you guys where you're at. Uh, but do the research that supports your app and your life. I mentioned it's the cherry and not the foundation of your application. So don't ever let your research weaken what really is the foundation of your application. And this is poignant because this student who emailed me had a couple of changes back and forth. And what the student was saying is because it's a summer research project and they actually have to take summer school, which is crazy. This is kind of a crazy situation. But his school, because he's moving into his junior year, his school, and he was kind of slow taking his classes freshman year, his school is saying that he has to graduate within four years. In order to do that, he has to take summer school. And if he does take summer school, he'll be off that graduation mark. And so they're saying if he goes and takes a summer research experience, that he'll have to actually increase his course load this term, next term, and the term after um, the, the summer. And I was like, wait a minute, because he's already in a term. I'm like, well, how's this term going for you? And he's like, you know, it's not going well. I'm, I'm taking more classes than I've ever taken before, and it's really a lot of work. And so I'm telling the student, well, listen, this is first red flag. You never want to put yourself in a position. The Harvard name is great. And doing the summer research experience there, that's awesome. I'm sure it's going to be lead to great things. But that research experience is only going to be seen and cared about and evaluated by medical schools if your numbers fit the bill. And if you have a 2.5 GPA, having the, the greatest, re you could have written an entire research journal, they won't care, right? You could have gone to Harvard and every Ivy League school and Oxford, you could have done all these great experiences, they won't care about those big names if you don't have the big grades to back it up. So never hurt the rest of your application by choosing a research experience. And this goes both for when people talk about summer research versus during the school year research. If you're the type of student who has the academic, the study skills, right, which I teach you guys, 
to do well academically and you have extra time, then do research. And it's a good advice and it's bad advice at the same time that a lot of students get when they start college, people tell them, hey, don't worry about extracurriculars yet. Instead, focus on your grades. And they're right in the sense that acutely, early on in your career, you want to work to establish your grades, to establish a strong base there, but also to be able to get your routine down so that way you have more time in your day to be able to fully function in your extracurriculars. If you're spread too thin, you're not doing well academically, it's going to pull your attention, pull your focus, pull your energy from the extracurricular. You're not going to stand out like you could. And then by not standing out, what happens? You don't turn that opportunity, that extracurricular, into what it could be. You don't show up. You're not the outstanding student. Therefore, you don't get the outstanding letter of recommendation. You don't have the outstanding outcome um, that you can talk about in your application from that experience, and it weakens it. It softens it. Or you put a bad taste in their mouth because you're not ready for that experience yet, and you never get a second chance. So it's good advice that you should wait, but some people wait too long to do it. But the whole point of this is, is the very first thing is building your foundation. So you guys need to learn how to study get your grades, and then pick one activity and then build it up and build it up. I see people who are in one research lab who are then going to do a summer research project somewhere else and then doing that summer away. Imagine if you're running a research lab and you have a student who's in your research lab, you've taken the time to train them, you've given them a project, given them responsibility, and they tell you, oh, hey, by the way, I'm gonna be gone this summer, so I'm going to do another research project. How would you treat them the rest of the year? How did you treat them when they got back? like an uncommitted person. I've talked about commitment versus interest before, right? So instead of going to chase the big name, how about you just make a big difference, a big impact in that current lab you're in? Does this make sense to everybody, right? The research is extra, so we gotta figure out, make sure we're supporting and creating a constructive app and we're not gonna have a bunch of, because I've seen this. There are people who come to me and like, oh, I've been, I've been doing research since I was a freshman, I've been in 15 different labs, like all this stuff, and I said, well, listen, where's your publications? What, what, what? Oh, you get none? Oh, you're worse off than the person who did one summer and got a single publication. It's a big difference there. So it's the impact factor. And as part of that, right, that comes to the next thing, is do the research that supports the rest of your app, but then also, And I think I just wrote the same thing twice. But do the research that supports your app and that part of your app. In the sense that we have to understand what research, right? When we do research, that research only matters if we make it matter to medical schools. And what medical schools are looking for are two things. The most important thing is a letter of recommendation. Is a letter of recommendation. The second thing is scholarly output. And I say scholarly output because that can be a presentation, a poster, an abstract. I'm going to call it Dear Editor slash Opinion Piece. It can be a lit review or it can be a full-blown article because I'm running out of space. When you do research and you're evaluating, should I do this research? Is this the opportunity for me? Will this matter to medical schools? The only thing medical schools care about are these two things. And the reason that people try to do these big, prestigious, fancy research programs, people confuse and think, oh, it's the name of Harvard, that's why I'm going there. No, you're going there because the researchers at Harvard are of the highest level, the highest quality. Therefore, to be a high quality researcher, a lot of them are prodigious publishers. They publish all the time. And so if you go and be part of one of these programs, you'll have a scholarly output. That's the confusion, right? So not the name, it's the output. The other thing is you'll have a letter of recommendation from someone who's used to write a letter of recommendations, who has clout, who carries weight, so you'll have that letter of recommendation. So it's those two things. And as you go through your research experience, the letter of recommendation, who should write that letter, right? When you're thinking about the letter of recommendation for your research, it should be the PI, the head of the lab, not one of someone else in the lab. When we talk about scholarly output, one of these things must happen. So when you're deciding what research should I do, where should I do it, does it matter? Well, are you going to have access to the PI? Or is this a program, right, where you're only going to be working with the graduate assistant or the postdoc and you're not working with the PI? If you're not doing that, how can you expect to get a meaningful personal letter of recommendation from that PI? You can't. 
So it defeats the purpose. The second thing is scholarly output. So if you're working in a lab for only a summer, that's a short period of time. It's hard to get a publication out in that short of time. You can do it, but what you have to do is look critically and say, well, wait a minute. Is this program, do they have an infrastructure set up for me to publish in this short period of time? So ask questions like, excuse me, I'm coming in for the summer and it seems like a great opportunity, but one of the things I'm looking for, I'm looking for two things out of this, three things, you say three. I'm looking for three things out of this research opportunity. The first is I'm looking for mentorship and growth. I want to grow as a scholar. So I'm looking for some sort of training and people working closely with me to support me. Do you offer that? The second thing you want to say is I am going to need a letter of recommendation. I'm trying to go to medical school. So will you be able to, as the PI, write me a strong letter of recommendation if I perform as I know I can in your summer? Yes, great, then do it. The third thing is to ask them, I'm only there for a short period of time and medical schools want to see scholarly output. Scholarly output can be any of these things. Built into the summer program, do you have a way, do you have a mechanism for me to do some sort of scholarly output? Doesn't have to be a full article, but is there some way that I can have a scholarly output? And when I say that, and we talk about these things, you might say, well, wait a minute, how are they gonna know that? They should already have a project set up, identified, and primed. So the project should be set up. It should be primed and it should be projected. And what I mean by that is that when they have this project for you, so, oh, you've got a great project lined up for you. Okay, is it already set up? Or do I have to do all the background lay work? We're gonna troubleshoot or did you guys already troubleshoot and now it's primed to pop for me to do some actual effective work. The third thing is, is then, Based off that primed, what is the projected timeline? And so this is what is the issue with some clinical research. As soon as you get involved in clinical research, they know they need a scholarly output. They can't get it because the projected timeline of that publication doesn't fit. Oh, it's a super rare disease. So it's going to take us six years to get enough patients to, to make it matter. So therefore, it's not projected to publish in time. So we had to ask these specific questions so we know if this research fits us and if we're going to get one of these. As part of that, right, and this is the project, you want to know what the program is. So many of these summer research opportunities, or even during the year, they're part of a program. There's some program that funds it, that puts you in that lab, pays for all the training, all that kind of stuff, does the units. Does that program have a mechanism for scholarly output? So a lot of these summer programs will have a student symposium at the end where you can present. That gets you scholarly output. You can then take that presentation and submit it to conferences for more scholarly output. Or you can take that presentation and turn it into a poster. Or you can take that poster and turn it into a presentation. You can take the abstract from that poster, write some more information, make it fancier, and submit an abstract to a journal. Even a student journal counts. A lot of these things also have their own publication. So it'll be like the um, and the one I'm thinking of is, uh, gosh, I can't even remember the name right now. So it's an L. But there's summer programs, and at the end of the summer, they have a symposium, and then they also publish certain selections in this, like, makeshift journal. It's like a student journal. And you can be in that. So look for those kind of things. And the other part of this is dear editors or opinion pieces. So if you did work, and maybe you didn't have formal output, but you learned a lot about a subject, you can start combing journals for articles on similar topics and then riffing off of that topic to create an opinion piece or a letter to the editor that either clarifies, expounds, and adds something of scholarly value to that journal. It's an easy way to say you have a publication or a scholarly output. The other things you can do a lit review, so even if you didn't do meaningful output research, maybe you did a lot of background research. Pull that research together, write a lit review, and submit it to a small journal and see if it gets accepted. And the last thing is an article. So when you decide about a research thing, ask yourself, understand that research is not mandatory and does this research experience take me out of my normal mold and mess up my foundation? In terms of does this research support my application and what I'm saying I'm about and all the things I'm trying to do? Don't sacrifice your grades for the research. Does this research actually, from that standpoint and checking that box of being scholarly, does it match up? Letter of recommendation, scholarly output. These things, the project, the program, et cetera. Does that make sense to everybody right now? <laughs> a lot of stuff there, but when you're talking about, does it matter where I do research? 
what research was the right opportunity for me. These are the things you should consider to be able to make a sound decision and make the right moves and get the right research for you. All right, guys, I'm Dr. Andrew Pinesett. I'm the study doc. And my website is studenttransformation.com. I have all sorts of great courses, including courses that lay out exactly how to do pre-med, exactly how to apply to medical school, how to interview, how to get in, how to succeed in medical school. So get to my website, studenttransformation.com, and learn more about this stuff, guys. Check the description box below. I have free trainings, I have eBooks to help you become your greatness, to be your best, and to get into medical school and succeed and become a doctor, all right? So as always, it's no excuses, just dominate. If you enjoyed this, take a second, like the video, subscribe. I bring you guys fresh new content every week to help you execute, not in big, like, to all oh, the, hey, do research. No, it's more, it's more fine-tuned than that. We have to understand really the small things because the devil's in the details and the execution's in those details. We gotta break them down. That's what I'm doing for you guys. And like I said, I'm Dr. Pines and I'm the study doc and I am out of here, guys. Today is the day, guys. No more excuses, no more complaining. You're going to take your future in your own hands. You're going to dominate. You're going to be successful. Get to my website, studenttransformation.com. I challenge you. What are you going to do today to make your life better?